no one asks you to become desireless. No one asks you to be totally non-attached because your very nature is such that even the enlightened man must have that 2% attachment, otherwise he would not be able to exist in a body. But there is something that one has to remember that although you are attached <coughs> to this flower or to your beloved one, <coughs> the craving is not there. And any form of craving uh, produces uh, problems within you. So have all the attachments you want to have. And I've said this many times, if you have a five-roomed house, there is nothing wrong in having a ten-roomed house. Hmm? But are you hankering for the, for the ten-roomed house? Hmm? Are you craving for it? Is it going to do something for your ego self? Hmm? That I drive a better Cadillac than the Volkswagen my neighbor drives. Hmm? Or I wear a better suit than my pal Jim. So what is happening here? The mechanics are these, uh, that you are bolstering uh, your ego and creating unnecessary wants within yourself. And the very creation of unnecessary wants brings you suffering and misery. Hmm? So while living in this relative world, uh, you could never be non-attached. And if you want to become detached, then you go away into some forest and escape from yourself. That's detachment. Non-attachment contains a beauty of its own. So have all the attachments you want to have, uh, but it must be devoid uh, of hankering. It must be devoid of the sense of bolstering up your ego. Because what would happen then that you would not be living within yourself? You'll be living in your ego self, which is none else but composed of thought formations. And what reality, what tangibility is there in thought forms which are forever changing all the time? Hmm. And that is the idea a person has to develop that I am forever the same. Hmm? I have not changed at all. For I come from the land of changelessness and I will re reach the land of changelessness. Hmm? So from the non-changing, we are proceeding to non-changing. Hmm? And yet all the things that come up in your minds, changing, 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 which are none else but uh, thought forms. Hmm? So my little daughter sitting over there, she sings. She's so pretty. I mean, everyone thinks that they are pretty, you know? They imagine themselves to be far better looking than what they really are. And that's a fact. Look into the mirror again. And you will think you are far more nicer looking than what you really are. So, we are 
so much involved uh, in our outer stuff that surrounds us. Hmm? It is the externality for that is influencing our lives. Hmm? And everything which is external has the quality of motion and wherever there is motion there has to be change which any science can tell you about. Hmm? So, as the external things around you change, you are at the same time being influenced by your ego self, which is forever changing, and the changing of the ego self makes you see the changes around you. You see how it is all interrelated. That when you find through your spiritual practices and meditations that beautiful stillness within you, then all change disappear. <laughs> all change disappear. And you start appreciating what life is really about. Our greatest trouble lies in the non-appreciation of life. For we do know, we do not know rather, what life is all about. How many here could truly say that I know myself? How many of you could truly say that I know my life? But far ways to go to be able to know yourself, to be able to know what life is, because nothing else could exist but life itself. For everything is living, pulsating. There are so many automatic processes going on in this universe of ours, even within your own bodies, hmm? that you are not even aware of. How much are you aware of your heart beating? Hmm? Unless you get a pain, then you become aware. So your awareness lies in the pain, but not in the very object itself of that beautifully pulsating heart. Hmm? And Dr. Padmini will tell us how many gallons of blood it pumps throughout the body in 24 hours. And yet we are not aware of it. How many are really aware of themselves breathing? Mm -mm. No, you're not. How many are aware of their own thoughts? They think that they think, but what are the mechanics of thoughts? Where do thoughts originate? Hmm. How have they come about? Hmm. What is the mechanism within hmm. that makes a thought form itself into a conscious thought? Because there's so, so much involved, uh, far, far deeper down within yourselves, where you go back, and further back, and further back hmm, to the original thought, <coughs> which, by the way, was not thought of by anybody or any being. It found its existence by itself. And that very thought force that found its own existence 
is still carrying on and on and on. Hmm? And will carry on till eternity. Hmm? So be glad you have that little ego. So at least you have some little cognition of what's happening around you, or perhaps what's happening to a very limited degree, what is within you. So, we come to the basic premise. I do not know who I am. I do not know what life is. I do not know the force that's involved in the creation or manifestation of life. Mm -hmm. These are vital issues of which people know nothing about. Yes. And yet all theologies go on saying, man, know thyself. Uh, but it doesn't answer you. It, it makes an injunction, it commands you, man, know thyself. But does it answer you who is really yourself? Does it show you the techniques in how to know yourself? Hmm. Most of these theologies can be thrown away. Hmm. They were formulations of unrealized men or women, for that matter. Because if they were self-realized, uh, they will tell you the why and the wherefore of things. When they say, man, know thyself, it must explain you who is thyself. Hmm? And what force is there that governs the self? So, we normally divide things up because separation is part of our nature. We always divide things up. This glass is separate from me and you are separate from her. Hmm? Or whatever the case might be. Or I am separate from that video camera. And because of the sense of separation, you also create the separation from your little self, separated from the big self, which is you. And what is the big self? The reality which exists within you. That is the big self. Indefinable, in comparable, beyond all words, uh, indefinable, but experienceable. <coughs> now, if you can regard uh, life to be an experience itself, existing by itself, you will at least Come a little way nearer the truth of yourself. And that is knowing to repeat again uh, that I exist. And when uh, you could really say, not the little ego that talks a lot of nonsense, it is always talking a lot of gibberish or gathering around but when you say I exist you know the meaning of yourself of that eternal I which is you and none else nothing else in this universe exists only you exist And within saying that I exist, the, I find that the entire universe exists in me. 
Ah, no separation. So the universe is not there. Hmm? For if the universe was there, I would be nowhere. But because I bring the universe within myself, I can truly stand up and say, I exist, for I am divinity itself, and nothing else can exist except divinity itself. Hmm? Yet people put on labels. Eh? They call him a he, or some other religionists might call that force a she. Huh? I just call it it. It exists. Hmm? What did Descartes say again? I asked you to remind me the other day. I think, therefore, I am the bloody fool. If he was here, I'd shoot him. I think, therefore, I am. Who thinks? What thinks? And what could give you, what thought could give you the meaning that I am what I am? You see how wrong Descartes was. You could never think that you are, but you are, therefore you think, the other way around. See, these philosophers, Herbert Spencer, Schopenhauer, Nichti, Fichti, uh, Jichti, What a waste of valuable time. Hmm? And Kant, too, he spelled his name wrong. <laughs> what a great loss of valuable time and of paper. With us, it is different. I was attached can make you experience who you are. You just have to be a bit ready for it. <coughs> <coughs> I beg your pardon. <coughs> you just take one step, and I will take you ten steps further. That is my responsibility. Hmm? And if you can only walk one step, I will carry you for ten more to give you a rest. And then kick your backside and say, now come on, do some more walking. And when you feel tired, I'm still there with you. Yes. These are truths. These are true teachings which must come within, the re within one's a realization and do not think hmm, that you've realized something because a realization has nothing to do with thought because all thought is formulated by one's imagination by the creation of one thought combining itself with another thought thinking it is creating a new thought. It is not. That is what thinking is all about. But realization ah, is something else. The real I without any cessation. The real I cessation the real I, without cessation. That is the realization. So children of immortality, <coughs> like Vivekananda said, uh, arise, awake, 
and stop not till the goal is reached. But I would add on to that guy, be brave. Let me tell you a little secret. Hmm? And understand this world. That which you think is real is not real at all. That which you think is unreal is true reality. Huh? Do you get that? Huh? The true reality is that it, that cannot find any confirmation in your mind saying that it is real. It can't. So what are you confirming? What are you affirming? Uh, this world is pregnant. And I'm not talking of the population explosion. Pregnant with thoughts that could never germinate. Because they're involved in thought formations. Now how can the formless have formation? And how can thought realize with its own particular forms that which is formless? Is that possible, I ask you? The realization. That's where we have to reach. The other part of your question was, uh, is self-realization possible in this lifetime? And my answer is, yes, it is possible. Spend just six months with me, constantly in my company, and I will make you self-realized, uh, not by knowledge and wisdom alone, but opening yourself up hmm, for a touch, where you will start identifying yourself with identification itself, which is none other but yourself. It's possible. Some people are lazy, perhaps, or they do not know the meaning of the wherefore and the why, and it might take millions of lifetimes, perhaps. Hmm? Not necessary. Why wait so blooming long? Find it here and now. When you walk out here, do you realize you're walking? No. It's just the motion you're producing. Right. But Feel the ground that you are walking upon. Hmm? Then you will know that my feet are firmly planted on this ground and I make my feet and the ground as a basis of my personal reality. Look up at the sky. Huh? What do you see? If you ask someone, they say, oh, the sky is blue, rubbish. The sky is not blue. Hmm? It is the water down here that is blue and reflected up that makes the sky seem blue.
touch to the sky and see if it's blue or not. But I am blue. And blue with you guys for not hmm? going a bit faster for self-realization. Therefore, sometimes I cry for you and I feel blue. <laughs>